Hey friends, another Solids Lessons. We're talking about the stress strain diagram again, and we're gonna do an example problem that actually uses the a, a stress strain diagram for a given material. They don't tell us what the material is. They say it's a steel alloy. What is a steel alloy? That would be like um, when you add something like chrome or nickel to uh, steel, right? If you add chrome to it, you can get chromium steel, which is a lot harder than regular steel. You can add nickel to it to get it into the, you know, you start getting into the stainless steel, that kind of thing. So it's some kind of steel alloy and they have, this is the stress strain diagram for this particular kind of alloy. Now, this is a weird kind of diagram. You think, I've never seen that, right? I'm used to the stress strain diagram kind of looking like like that, right, for a ductile material, right? Well, this is that graph. And what happens is, is that when this graph, when, you're, when this graph is actually generated, okay, in real life, if I had a constant um, scale down here on the bottom, what would happen is this first part happens so quickly, it's almost straight up and down, and then a little blip, and then that, right? So it happens, this part right here happens very quickly quickly there's not a whole lot of deformation when you're talking about steel deforming it's not like a rubber band right it doesn't stretch a whole lot before it starts to deform okay and so what happens is this first part is so close together it's hard to see so if you can stretch the scale out on this bit and then plot it with that bit you kind of get something that looks different so the scale from here to here this scale may be different than the scale from here to here to make that graph look like that. And that's exactly what's going on here. So there's, there's two parts of the graph. So this thing goes up and then over, right? And then this point right here is that point right there on the second set. So the blue scale is for this lower graph and the black scale is for that upper graph, okay? So, that, and it's, so it's two graphs on one and so the first time I saw this I'm like what is going on here what are we talking about why are there two scales so if you just move this bit whoop, over here to the end of that there's the rest of your graph right so if you see a problem like that that's what that means it's a little bit confusing because it's not explained in the book they just kind of like present it and then there it is and you're like what is that I don't know okay so they ask us to find a few things Regarding this material that we're going to have to use this graph for, number one, the modulus of elasticity, okay? The modulus of elasticity, that's what we did with, that's big E, right? Capital E, the modulus of elasticity, and what is it? Well, the modulus of elasticity, if you remember our last video, is the slope of this line right here, okay? That is the elastic region uh, of this curve. So this elastic region here is uh, what we're going to use on that, okay? So all we need is one point on there, because what we need, we need slope is rise, which is this, over run, which is this, right? So normal stress over strain, okay? So, and what I would typically do, now you can do a lot of different things, right? This looks like it's pretty linear through this section here, and it goes through intersection, 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 intersection. So really, I could use I could use 10 and point zero, 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 two, five, right? Or I could use 20 and point zero, zero, five, or I could use 30 in this guy or 40 in that guy. And I should get the exact same answer for any of those, right? I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use 40, 40, um, and let's see here. Let's see, this is, uh, let's make this, let's make this megapascals. And this guy is in millimeters per millimeter. Okay. So sigma is 40 megapascals, right? That's yield stress. And then epsilon at 40 is point that one, right? Because we're on the, this is the bottom, this, this uh, blue uh, uh, scale co uh, coordinates with this lower curve here. So 
How about 0 0.0010? And that's millimeters per millimeter, which really is a unitless thing, isn't it? Okay. And so that's going to give us, what is that going to give us on, you know, you can do this in your head. You're smarter than me, but divided by 0.0010, 40,000 megapascals. Okay, so 40,000 megapascals is E, or how, could, how else could I write that? I could write that as 40 gigapascals, right? Megas times 10 to the 6. This is time, gigas times 10 to the 9. So I just move my decimal over three places and I get 40 gigapascals, okay? So that's equal to the modulus elasticity. Okay, there's one of the answers, that's part A. Part B says, no, that's part B. Oh, I did part B first. Can you forgive me? Part A says the modulus of resilience. Okay, what is the modulus of resilience? Do you remember? I remember. It is the area under the elastic region of the curve. So it would be this area here. Okay? So let's figure that area right quick. And that is going to just be one half base times height. It's a triangle, isn't it? And that area is what? The area is megapascals times unitless. So modular resilience is going to be in megapascals. So that's going to be 40 times, what's the base? The base is 0 0.08. Okay. No, the base is not point. Don't get messed up on the scale like I just did, right? It's point zero zero one zero. No. Okay. And so that's going to be your modulus of resilience. Modulus of resilience is equal to. Ooh, that's going to be not bit very big, is it? Forty times point zero zero one. 0 0.04. Now that's that kind of not the way you'd write that. How would you write that? You'd probably write that in, instead of mega, let's write it in kilopascal. So we have to move the decimal over three places. One, two, boop, three. So the modular resilience is 40 kilopascals, kPa. Okay. There's the next one. That's part That's part A. We already did part B. Let's do part C, the modulus of toughness. The modulus of toughness, if you remember, is the area under the entire curve, okay? Now the area under the entire curve is going to kind of re require two approaches. We're going to have to do the area of this bottom piece and then the area of the top piece. So let's do it in two parts. So the bottom piece is, we already got this, right? We're going to do them in megapascal. So the triangle is 40, um, well, I'm going to do point, ah, racer. I'm going to do point. 0 0.04 megapascals plus okay plus this part here which is basically a rectangle isn't it um, and how big is that that's 10 and that's 35 so 0025 so this guy here is 0 0.0025 times times 40 again and then it's a little bit above the line, right? So if I added all of those little bits together, let's say we get one more little square there, right? If I added all those little, because that's like, I don't know, 20% and a little less than 20%, a little less and a little less. I'm going to call it, and this is an estimation. It's about as good as we can get, right? So I'm going to add one more square to it. And how big is a square? A square, let's see if that's 0.0005, one square is 0 
025, so point 12325 times one height, which is 10. Okay, so that gets the rectangle plus one more square. Okay, so this is all in megapascals. So this is megapascals, this is megapascals. And now we have to do this top up here. We have to be careful because the top uses a different scale. Okay. And so let's see. We could do, here's what we could do. We could count squares. Okay. So each square for the top up here is 0.02, if that's 0 0.04, right? So plus 0 0.02 times 10, right? So each little square for the top part up here is 10 tall. 0 0.02 wide. Now, how many squares? Okay, so here's 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 4 times 13 gets me the bottom part. So 4 times 13 is what? Uh, 40, 52? Okay, now let me do that in, the, I'll do it in red here. So I just, I just counted off all of these squares, right, all the way across and all the way down, right? All, so all of this in here is already counted for, okay? So how many squares do I have left? Okay, I'm going to count them right quick. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So there's 35 whole squares. So 52 plus 35 more. And then I'm going to count now the partial squares as close as I can get it, right? Um, okay, so maybe like what I think I do, do here is I'll do this one and this one make one. This one and this one make one, that's two. That one and that one make three. There's four, five, and I'll get that little bit there and that little bit there. So five more squares. Is that right? Let me do that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I got like ten squares and if you take half of some of the, half of those and put them on the other half, you make a whole square. So I think five more. So I'm going to make this 40. Okay. And that gets me a pretty good estimation. And that's in megapascals also of that area under the top up there. Okay. And that's about as close as you can get. It's just an estimation here. I mean, save trying to come up with a function for that line and to integrate and define the area under the curve and all that kind of fun stuff, but we're not going to do that. So, so let's see what we get here. So we got um, 0 0.04 plus 0 0.0025 times 40 plus 0 0.00025 times 10 plus 0 0.02 times 10 times 92, right? 92 equals 18.54, okay? So the modulus of toughness, 18.54 megapascals. And again, that's an estimate, but that's pretty close, right? Okay, so let's do part D. So the new length of the, find the new length of the specimen if a thousand newtons is supplied. And for the sharp out there, you'll notice I changed that from uh, U.S. customary to metric units. Thank goodness, right? So let's find out what happens when a thousand newtons is applied to this little specimen. It's a three millimeter radius, 250 millimeter height. So what can we find about that right away? We can find sigma, right? Normal stress. So sigma equals P over A, so 1,000 newtons, divided by uh, the area, which is pi, R squared, 3 squared, 
which is equal to, how much is that? 1,000 divided by pi equals divided by 9 equals 35.36. Really 35.37 megapascals. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, think about this. Okay, so here's 35 right here. Bam, and then I could come down here. And I could read that number off of my graph. Now remember, I'm on this bottom scale down here. Well, I don't know. It's kind of in between here, a little bit over there. How do I do that? Well, here's how you do it. We do a little interpolation. So this x distance here, right, x is to 35.37 as, and since it's linear, we can pick one more point on there that we know, like, uh, like 40 and 0 0.0010. So as 40 is to 0 0.0010. So how big is X? And I expect it to be around 0.0075-ish. So let's see what it is. X is a 0 0.0010 times 40. Oh, no, divided by 40. Thank you very much. Divided by 40 equals times 35.37 equals... Here we go. X is equal to 0 0.000884. Okay? And that's millimeters per millimeter. And that is the strain of this of this specimen. That's the strain, okay? So what do we do with that strain? That strain tells us how much how many millimeters per millimeter that this thing is going to compress in this case. So how many millimeters do we have? We have 250. So to find the delta that it's going to compress, it's simply 0 0.000884 times 250, that original length. Because you remember, that comes from this equation right here, right? We know what strain is. We know what the original length is. If we multiply that guy over here, we get the delta for that unit, the, the, the change. And that's going to be times 250.221. And it's in compression, so we know it's going to shrink. It's going to get shorter. And how much is it? What's the, and it says, what is the new length? The new length is going to be 250 minus the answer. It's going to be new length. We'll just go length new is equal to 249.221. 7, 8 millimeters. And there you go. So we're able to use our shear moment diagram. Shear moment diagram. Did I say that? Our stress strain diagram to find out some information about these, uh, these specimens here. So we found out modular toughness, modular resilience. We, we found out how much change in length it would have, and we could figure that at any, any force, right? We could put different forces on here. Uh, and remember, the one thing you got to remember is this equation right here, okay? This equation is only valid on that elastic portion of the curve. Anywhere else, it's not valid any longer, okay? So you got to be careful about that. All right, gang, I hope this helped you, and I'll see you on the next video.